Greetings viewers and welcome to today's info sharing session. We'll be covering the process on how to create a bill of materials within Sagetron Devolution. Now within the manufacturing process, you'd have a bill of material and within the bill of material you specify the components or ingredients that are required and the quantities to make up that finished item. And in today's presentation, we'll see how to create a bill of material as well as follow up on the manufacturing process. So first I'm going to go to Bill of Materials Maintenance and I'm going to go to Items. And I'm going to be creating a Bill of Material. Now very importantly is before you begin creating a Bill of Material, you need to ensure that the finished item as well as the ingredients or components have been created as stock items with the new Evolution database. Right, so I've gone to Specify my bill of material. I'm going to specify the finished item to be manufactured. So I'm going to go find the item that I'm intending to manufacture. There we go. And I've got a couple of options there. So just go and specify the item again. There we go. And you'll see that we've got a couple of options there. So the first one being default manufacture breakup quantity. This simply means is that the components that you've added onto the bill of material are sufficient to manufacture how many units of this item. So I'm saying the components that we're going to be using are enough to manufacture one of my finished item. Then we've got a couple of details with regards to the breaking up of bill of material, specifically on GRVs, as well as allowing for over or under manufacturing. And also, if you are going to be manufacturing on the fly, a couple of options there that you can make use of. Also, very importantly, is that perhaps um, your manufacturing process may take a number of or a period of time, and you can then specify the number of lead days or days it would take to manufacture this particular item under your manufacture lead time section. Right, so I specified my finished item, and also, if need be, I can add additional fields. So you could create a user-defined field for your bill of material and then add any additional information you want to add on that bill of material that you're going to be manufacturing. Right, back to bill of materials, and I'm now going to be adding the component items that I'm going to be using on this manufacture process. Add button. And I'm going to go find the items that will make up this particular item. So specify the warehouse and the quantity that I'm going to be manufacturing or using on this bill of material. And now it's simply a case of adding all the items or ingredients that make up this item. So there we go. So what we have here, we've got our finished item, and we're then saying that these are the four components or ingredients that I'm going to be using to complete that item and also the quantities. Right, so there we have it. Our bill is now complete, and we can then move on to the manufacturing process. Under bill of materials transactions, manufacture processes, I'm going to start the process and click on the add button. Now I can specify which item I'm going to be manufacturing. There we go. And also the quantity that I'm going to be manufacturing of this item and also the warehouse. So what you notice is there we have a manufacture process number and we can link it to a project and also insert an external reference if required. I've also got a section there dealing with, for example, the manufacturing lead time as well as a projected completion date, if applicable. Right, so now I'm just going to go save the manufacture process. 
right, the status is active, and now I can continue. What you notice is that we have four options available, auto manufacture, auto manufacturing process, auto draw and auto return. I'm going to start off with the auto draw feature. So I'm going to use auto draw. And what you'll notice is that the system has now automatically drawn the four component items that I require onto the manufacture process, as well as the quantities that are required. So after the items have been drawn, I'm going to say save process and close. And I can now print the picking slip and go and pick those items that I'm going to be making use of on the manufacture process. So there's my manufacture process number, the items, and how many quantities I need to pick for this process. So I'm going to close that screen and you'll see that there's the manufacture process still active and I can then go back to the manufacture process once the physical manufacture has been completed I'm going to open the manufacture process and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to add a line item and I'm going to use an action called manufacture inventory right so manufacture inventory and I've got my details there. So we've drawn the items. The process, the physical process has now been completed. I'm saying that we need to now manufacture the item. And I'm going to say save process and close. If I say yes to print the picking slip, see there's no records to print as all the items have already been picked. Right, so you notice now that the manufacture process has been updated to a completed status. And if I go in there, we can just see what happened previously. So we initially used the auto draw feature. Four component items were drawn. At that point, the stock quantities of the ingredients were reduced. And then by specifying, adding the manufacturer inventory line item, the system then went to go and increase the quantity of the finished good. So we've then used a manufacture process in conjunction with the auto draw feature. Our next option is going to be using the auto manufacture. Right, select the item and warehouse. Quantity to process, we've got our new manufacturing process number. We're going to save these details. And I'm now going to use the auto manufacture feature. So auto manufacture. In this instance, you'll see that we now have the four draw inventory line items, as well as the manufacture inventory line item appearing automatically. And now it's simply a case of saying save process and close. We'll view the picking slip. Right, there's my details. Quantity to pick. Close. And you'll see the process has now been completed. So what happened there was we used the, if I edit the manufacture process again, you see that we use in this instance the auto manufacture feature and automatically the draw inventory lines as well as the manufacture inventory line was added automatically onto the manufacture process. Right, our next process is going to be, we're going to add a new manufacture process. Right, so there we have our seasonal vegetable platter. Right, so I'm going to specify my warehouse and save. In this instance, I'm going to be using the auto manufacture and process option. So I'm going to click on that option, auto manufacture and process. And this process is automated. So once again, the inventory has been drawn, the manufacture line added, print the picking slip. 
and got our details there. And the process has now been completed. Let's look at the auto return features. So back into add a new manufacture process. Right, I'm not going to save the manufacturer process, but let's just uh, add a warehouse. Right, so in order to see the impact of the auto return, I'm going to use the auto draw option. So I've drawn the options there, I've drawn the four inventory items, save process and close, and we can then now go picking slips. So we're going to pick those items on the draw inventory action. And the process is now active. So if I go back into that manufacture process, um, for example, perhaps the items were drawn in error or perhaps the manufacture process isn't gonna take place at this particular point in time, I can then use the auto, the auto return feature. So auto return, and it's now return those items into stock. I can say save process and close. So just to confirm that we've drawn the items, they've been now returned, save process and close. The manufacture process is still active. And if I go into the manufacture process once again, I can then, if need be, go and draw those items at a later stage and complete the manufacture process. Right. And if we then go back to our a new manufacture process, we're going to be looking at the manual, manual manufacture process. So once again, specify the item. And there may be instances whereby a manufacturing process may take a certain number, period of time to complete. Um, so you may, for example, want to add items as and when they're required or draw them onto the manufacturing process. Another example could be perhaps that um, you only have a portion of the items available on the manufacturing process, so you draw them as they become available. So let's just go and save the manufacturing process. And I'm now going to use the menu. So I'm going to add the lines individually. So I'm going to say draw inventory item or draw inventory. And for example, we may have this item available in stock. And we've also got that item available. Right, so maybe, in, for example, we may have the, the remaining items, perhaps you don't have available stock of those items. So in the interim, we'll just simply draw these two items and we'll say save process and close. On my picking slip, I'm going to draw just the two items that I've got available in stock at this point in time. Right, so the manufacturer process is currently still active. And then when perhaps the supplier delivers the goods or I've got available quantity, I can then go back to the manufacture process, create a new draw inventory line, and I can then simply go and add or draw the additional items. And there we go. So I've drawn the four items. However, I've drawn them at different stages or, or different points in time. So I'm going to say save process and close. And I'm now going to be able to go those, those two items that were added afterwards. They're the two items. And still active. And then at a later stage in time, I can then simply just go and not add, but just go edit that item, that manufacture process. And then I can simply go, if need be, go and use the new action, which be manufacture inventory. 
there's the item to be manufactured, the finished item, and save process and close, complete the manufacture process, and it's now been completed. Let's just do a recap of what we covered in our presentation today. So first we'd go to Bill of Materials Maintenance Items. And this is the process where you're going to be creating a finished good. So it's specifying your inventory item to be manufactured. Um, some information there about the, about the Bill of Material. And you can add additional fields if required by creating a UDF. And it's a case of clicking the Add button and specifying the ingredients or components that are going to form part of this manufactured item. Once it has been completed, we then go to your Bill of Materials Transaction Manufactured Processes and click on Add to create a new manufactured process. We have the system allocating your manufactured process number, specifying the item to manufacture and the quantity to manufacture. Once you've saved that manufacture process, you've got the four options available being auto manufacture, auto manufacture and process, the auto draw, which would draw the items automatically, and then you'd then go and add the manufacture line item, and then auto return. So if you've drawn certain items, you can use the auto return to return them into stock. And then finally, you can use a manual auto manufacture process where you would go and add the line items automatically and specify which action is going to be used. For example, draw inventory and then manufacture or use manufacture inventory action uh, once all the items have been drawn. So really it's a case of determining exactly what item is to be manufactured and the physical sequence of the manufacture process. So perhaps you could use the auto manufacture or in some instances use the auto draw or perhaps other than that, also make use of the manual manufacture process. So that concludes our presentation today on how to create a bill of material. Thank you for watching. It's over and out for me and goodbye.